Hello, and welcome to an overview of Proteus MMX, release 3.14. Today's presentation will be at a fairly high level, and at any time, if you have questions or would like to see more information relating to Proteus MMX, please feel free to contact us at e sales at eaglecmms.com. As you can see, we've redesigned the login screen. It no longer says login, it says sign in. And on the home page, we do have a service request capability. It can be modified to show only the fields and field names that you would like displayed. Um, and you can also indicate which fields would be required. And the required fields would have a red, little red star by them as the describe work does, okay? Or the department work type here in our example. Uh, when the client fills this out, they can hit submit and people who are the administrators will get a email notification regarding the particular uh, service request. We also can create portals so that the system uh, here it's called tags, but we can create portals so that um, you have different facilities, uh, manage apartment complexes or whatever, and you don't want one complex to know you're managing another one, etc. You can have different portals and the uh, URL will be unique for each of those portals. And again, the responsible parties would be able to identify where and uh, when that request had come in from. I'm going to go ahead and sign into the system. And one of the things that you'll see on the home screen is your demand work orders or non scheduled work orders versus scheduled. Okay. Um, these are the things like uh, the toilet's broken or uh, a water leak or whatever it might be versus your preventive maintenance uh, that you schedule weekly, quarterly, semi-annually, and et cetera. Over here, you're going to see whether those work orders are getting done on time or not. And you can filter this by employee, or if you do subcontracting work, you can uh, filter it by contractor. And you can also filter it by facility. So if, again, you have multiple facilities, um, you'll be able to see that the graph changes and the numbers change drastically as we filter by property. Down here, we have a projection of both active and work orders that are going to occur in the future. Okay. And if I want to know what these future work orders are, I can simply click on the bar and it will show me the names of my jobs, the frequency and when they're going to occur, the 25th. And uh, they also show me when they last occurred. So there's um, a tool here to sort of get a grip on your work. If you're a technician, your work orders that you are assigned to will appear here. This green check mark, of course, says the work order is complete. You don't have to worry about that. Your supervisor will close it. We have quick links. And one of the things that you'll see on the quick link is a, a redesigned call log. That call log can take information and be converted into either a service request or a work order. And in doing so, you can track the work order and the call log will maintain its information um, as long as uh, it's, it's open. And again, you can hide the create service request. You may just want to create a work order directly from it. Um, and again, the uh, new version of this allows quite a bit of information flow. You notice we don't have to go drag our cursor down to find assets anymore. Assets is clickable. 
and it takes us right to the assets in the system. So if I've got my, if I'm a hospital facility, I can have my sites and my buildings, et cetera. Or if I'm running apartment buildings, I've got stores or whatever types of buildings that I've got. Um, again, I can identify and write work orders directly to the building or I can go down to a specific room in the building, or I can go to uh, a specific feature in the building. I don't have to have any assets detailed in order to create work orders. Uh, obviously, if you've got preventive maintenance work you're going to do on furnaces and boilers and rooftop units and things like that, you're definitely going to wanna to put those assets in place. Service requests come in here and you notice the menu again is reorganized. We go assets, service requests, and work orders are right next to each other. And again, I don't have to drag my cursor down, but work orders are available and clickable right here. And it will bring me to my list of work orders. Some of the things that we've changed is the ability to see if there's an attachment. So if I, my technicians are using a mobile device and they take a picture, I get the work order back, I'm able to identify that there's one or more attachments on that work order. And if I want to edit the work order, I will be able to see those or view those, uh, view that work order, I will be able to see the attachments that are on it. Another change that's been made is these three columns. This indicates work orders are complete. This indicates they've been printed. This indicates that there is an attachment. If I don't want to see those particular columns, one of the things we've changed is the ability to remove that information. So um, if I want to remove printed, uh, and a new one, by the way, is failed inspection. So if you're using our inspection module, it's going to give you the opportunity to um, look at failed inspections. And that symbol, when you look at it, is this exclamation point. Again, if I want to remove all of those, I can do that. Another feature we've put in place, and this is a global option, is I can remove columns. So if I don't need cost center, for example, or I don't need um, customer and customer location because it's not applicable to the way I structured my data, I can change and make this change apply to every user in the system. So everybody will have the same order of columns and same sequence of columns and availability of columns by checking this box. This is only uh, something that the system's admin rights can do. The inspections have been enhanced. Um, we can put in very detailed inspections. And if I wanna view that inspection in the work order here, I can see what the questions are. And of course, we can capture and track ranges and things like that on specific assets. In a facility, you might wanna keep some parts and you can list the types of parts that you wanna keep. They could be things like filters and um, belts and, and things like that, or you do not have to use inventory at all. Um, but if you are using our inventory and purchasing system, it's been enhanced. It allows you to create credits to vendors and from vendors and things like that back into cost centers. Um, and again, it, if you need more detail on inventory and purchasing capabilities, we do interface with other purchasing systems such as uh, Oracle and uh, other ERP systems and so forth. So um, talk to your sales team about the ability to interface to other purchasing systems. Your people and the labor crafts that re they relate to are again uh, in place. And if I 
instead of having to drag my cursor down to people or personnel, associates, whatever you want to call it, I'm able to just click right on it and it'll give me all of my people. We have a lot of new key performance indicators in place, uh, work orders by location, total costs by facilities, root cause failure graphs, and things like that. And again, these are all based on your defined root cause failure tracking. So uh, tenant problems or weather or whatever the reasons might be uh, that you want to track, we can, we can track those, create a graph. Um, we also can look at um, performance of, of different facilities. Are they keeping up with the work orders and things like that? And then we can look at all of the technicians through a work labor view and look at what percentage of your time is being spent on specific areas. Now, this graph is for the existing open work orders. I can look at all work orders and it'll give me all work orders for the last month. And as you can see, the graph changed a little bit. But if I wanna go back and look at an earlier time frame, again, the data will change and the percentages of time spent will change drastically. The settings, um, icon has changed and here are where you can go and fill in all of the details relating to your asset categories, your company information, the countries you do business in, the currencies you want to use, for example. Uh, you set your inventory parameters if you want to use those. Um, purchasing again and in a facilities environment, the work order information. So if you want to track root cause failure reasons, for example, and you want to put different priorities in place and different statuses, waiting for budget approval, waiting for material, all of that is done through the settings and the data fields, okay? Remember in facilities, we do interface directly to all building automation control systems via BACnet. Uh, we also directly interface with GEM from Johnson Controls. So if they have a mix of different BACnet um, systems, we can bring those all into Proteus. We can trigger work orders based on runtime, and we can also set alarms based on faults or failures to trigger work orders to track what has been done, who did it, what it cost, and so forth. Um, So again, settings has become this little icon here. Based on roles and rights, most people may not see any of the icons or any of the information from purchasing over to the right, except maybe reports, okay? And we'll talk about that in a minute. The help function has been upgraded drastically. And here we have manuals, we have quick reference material, we have the release notes, for their latest release. Uh, we have videos to help you learn how to do things, frequently asked questions, and this is being updated from time to time. Um, we have both the, the Proteus MMX and the mobile uh, application download links now, so that if you need to know where can I go for the latest uh, version of the mobile app, here it is at the Windows Store or Google Play Store or your iOS iTunes Store. And then we also have a contact us. And if you want to submit a ticket, you can put in your name and your company name and what location of facility you are because we have a lot of customers with multiple locations. So it makes it easier to fit, find where you're at. And you can put attachments on this if you have a problem and submit a ticket to Eagle. This is monitored and available to all employees uh, who are using Proteus MMX. The reports, again, uh, we have a Proteus interface alarm interface mapping uh, 
Um, we have a lot of asset reports and company reports and inventory, work order reports, purchasing provider reports, and, and labor reports. But if we don't have something that you need, we work with you for custom reports. And in these custom reports, you're able to define the specific report that you need and rerun it over and over and over. So the data that's collected in Proteus MMX obviously is critical. And we work with each of our customers to make sure that when the system is set up and as you're using it, we understand how you want the system to work, how you want to get data out of it, what that data means to you, and what processes are going to drive getting good quality, consistent data. So this is a quick overview of Proteus MMX. Again, feel free to contact us at any time. Um, your facilities um, can be well managed and easily managed using Proteus MMX. And we look forward to serving you to make the system cleaner and better for you.